Hi, I'm Bonnie Saratori with Spiritual Acceleration. And I want to talk about some of the things that actually happen when you die. Okay. I know we have a lot of beliefs out there. We have a lot of information, a lot of channeled information, a lot of information where people have died and come back into the body. And then they talk about what happens for them. What's kind of cool is when you, if you really start exploring, there's probably thousands and thousands of, of people talking about near-death experiences where they actually died and had these experiences. And if you start really checking it out, you're going to discover that people have different kinds of experiences. Not everyone has the same experience. And it's kind of cool because it's really showing you that you can't really trust what's being said. Okay, I'm going to say something about this and here's what's up. When the body truly dies and the soul disconnects, that, that the cord that connects the soul to the body, when that disconnects, that's a true death experience, okay? If you're, if you're still connected, you're not dead, meaning you're just having experiences at a soul level and you can have all kinds of experiences. You'll see family, you'll see loved ones, you'll see Jesus, you'll see Moses, you'll see all kinds of spirits, okay? It doesn't mean that you have died. You've just gone into an altered state depending on what's happening in your own psyche, your subconscious, your soul's evolution, things of that nature. So when we hear people telling their stories about near death, I've actually had people being sick and really ill and then claim to have a near death experience. So you get a lot of people saying I had a near death experience. Okay. So a true near death means that you so your your cord did not snap but you did leave the body and you were gone for an extended period of time, 20 minutes, half hour, something like that. Then you have this experience where you're actually out experiencing things. But again, it's not a death experience, okay? It's where you've seemingly left the body. The body is showing signs or no signs, you know, you're no heartbeat. Uh, usually there's some kind of activity in the brain, but even if the dead's like, if there's no activity whatsoever and the cord is still connected, if it's an extended period of time, then there's going to be brain damage when you come back into the body, okay? But a true, true, true near death doesn't really ever tell you the truth or the absolute of what you will experience because you didn't actually disconnect from the body and then come back in to talk about your near death experience. So people have illnesses and they have experiences where they have these alt altered experiences because they're in delirium or high fevers or terribly ill. You can have these amazing experiences, okay? You know, it's like you're shown things, you see things, you hear things, you meet people, reconnect, all kinds of different things, okay? But ultimately, you, no one really knows until you actually physically leave the body, dead, gone, okay? Disconnect no more cord. What happens too is when you do leave the body, when you, when you truly die, okay, when you really do die, many, many things actually happen, okay? So you leave the body. Now you're not going to go immediately into the light, but things are going to be happening. One of the first things that actually does happen is you are shown your life, okay? You are shown like flashes, big flashes of your life. And you're shown the things you've done, people you've hurt, bad and good things you, you've experienced, how you've caused harm, hurt people, things of that nature. But you basically are looking at your life. So there's could have been things that you've forgotten about that you kind of put behind you and it's like buried in your subconscious thing. Like you've done stuff and it's like, oh, okay, I don't want to look at that. Or you have guilt or shame and that type of thing. So everything's going to be right in front of you, right in your face. Okay. So that happens for a reason because we need to see and understand what we're still holding on to, what we're still wanting to learn, evolve, and also the soul experiences, the soul lessons. And then after we see all this stuff, all the things flashing before our eyes, generally we kind of hang around for a bit before we actually go into the light. We can, you know, we want to see our family or see different people. This is why people sometimes feel like, oh, yeah, I felt like my aunt was with me. And then you find out that she died. Okay. There's many, many of those kinds of stories. So when my brother passed just this last September, I was doing a clearing <laughs> and he presented bright, 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 right there. I was in the house with him 
And, but he presented in this flashy and really bright, brilliant light, just very briefly, and then he was off, okay? But that's what happens. We'll go see people when we do leave the body, okay? Once the, the body is dead, the energy of that, the, the silver cord that connects us is cut, severed, and the soul is free, you experience a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, one of the things I want to say is when you are when you leave the body, you're still identifying yourself as though you are the same person that the body you had, okay? We still are having these beliefs that this is who we are. This is partly why we'll see family members or people will hang around or even years and years later, or people get stuck on the astral planes or get stuck on different time space. And when we see them, psychics or people who see energy sees them, they're going to look like they did in that last body they were in because we're still identifying with the body. We are still believing that's who we are. Okay. That's also when people do present, like, for example, let's just say that someone from many centuries ago did go into the light and then they present, they'll often present in order for people to recognize them in the body that they had, the, the features, the form that they had. This way we see people, we identify and we think, oh yeah, that's my grand, my aunt or uncle or grandfather or whoever. Okay, so we hold that energy. When, that, when we drop that energy, we do that when we make other agreements before we're incarnating. Sometimes we'll make agreements for several lifetimes ahead, just depending. But basically, we made up with our soul family, which are the people that we have many, many experiences with. So we meet up and be based on some of those things that we saw of our lives, like the reel of the film, like, whoa, really quickly, our whole life passes before us. So from that, we, we know, okay, I want to be better. I want to make something change. I want to not hurt somebody. I want to be good or whatever that is that we're believing or wanting or hoping. Remember, we're still thinking we're this human being. Okay. So we connect with other souls and the other people that are part of that. We can still connect and make agreements and contracts with people who are still alive because we're dealing with a soul level. And remember, you have a soul that comes into the body, but you have many, many, many aspects of you that are not in a body, that do not take on human form, but it's still you, like your higher levels, your God self levels, your over soul levels, your super consciousness levels. All of these are still you, okay? It's not some other soul. It is you, no one else, okay? So when we make these agreements with the souls, we work by based on the experiences, let's just say, for example, Let's just say that you experienced a feeling like you didn't belong. Okay. Okay. Let's just say that when you came into the body, you know, you, you were, when you were birthed into this body, you came into a body with a mom. And now remember, it's still soul agreements. Okay. But you came into the body with a mom and you felt she didn't want you because she, on some level, she was immature. She had issues. She was afraid, whatever her issue, whatever that was. And so you feel that energy, you take that on as though mom doesn't want you, okay? And if she does something like tries to abort you or has thoughts of like getting rid of you, you're going to feel those energies, those thoughts, those emotions as well and take it personal, okay? So you're going to anchor in that, you know, you're not wanted here and you might be killed. So when, you're, when you come into the world, you're coming in with that as a foundation, Okay. And that is the foundation of your entire life, unfortunately. So let's just say that in that life, you know, you believe that you weren't belonging, you didn't matter, weren't enough, weren't love, whatever those conclusions are. And so you come into the world and you start having experiences so that you can actually heal that, but we don't know that. So we collect more evidence and more proof. Oh, we don't belong here because what happens more and more experiences happen that keep us in that same kind of belief because other people will either, you know, abandon, reject, betray, whatever, or hurt us or harm us and will be afraid. So we start to live our lives, again, based on that foundation of belief. And, when the, and then we create a whole lifetime based on that and we miss out on so many things and there's going to be massive regrets because it was based on a lie which every, everyone's life is based on a lie in your mother's womb because you're going to pick up on the energy of your mother. You're going to pick up on the energy of others and you're going to feel as though it's you because when you first come in, you have no sense of yourself. 
you are this intuitive psychic little being, conscious, little energy frequency, absorbing all your mother's energy, absorbing all her wounding, her misperceptions, her beliefs, her conclusions, her horrors, all that stuff. You're not going to know it's not you. This is why when we, you know, when we do clearings, it's good to get your mother's energy out from the womb. So coming back. So now you've seen, oh, wow, my whole life was wasted because I believed something that wasn't true. Oh, okay. So now I'm making some more new agreements because this time I'm going to get it right. This time I'm going to be able to get in there and unravel that wounding and that belief that I'm not wanted. I don't belong. I'll be killed. And so I make these new soul agreements. Okay. It's going to come out the same way. Okay. So maybe, all right. So maybe I come back in or somebody else comes back in again into the mother's womb. Now, remember at a soul level, you've made agreements that this soul is going to be doing certain things, acting certain ways, having behaviors to activate your wounding so you can unravel it. But here we go. Oh, you come into the body again. Oh, mom wants to kill you. <laughs> she doesn't want you. She's going to abort you, you know, and then, and then you, then all those traumas are there again. So you come in and in your birth, you're born into the world. And then you, you're again, you got that same old, same old. Okay. The problem is, is we don't remember what we agreed to. We don't remember what it is we're trying to understand and unravel. We don't remember the traumas that we've experienced. And, and that's why we're recreating them again. We don't have the higher teachings. Okay. So we do this repeatedly. I guarantee you, whatever you're experiencing in your life, you've done it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Okay. It's just now in the new paradigm that people are finally waking up to what's really happening. Not everybody, but, you know, those of us who are truly asking and seeking and tracking the energy and seeing what really happens, we're understanding. Okay. So what happens, though, is after we make these agreements, and again, we're going to come back in, do the same old, same old. But now it's like, oh, here comes this lifetime. And you had that same kind of thing. Oh, but lo and behold, this lifetime, you met some kind of teacher who has higher consciousness teachings, understandings, okay? And you hook up with that. And then pretty soon you start to unravel and clear your, your deep wounding so that you don't have to recreate the same old scenario again, okay? So then this time you expand even more, you heal more, you wake up more, you heal these deep, profound wounds that you've been recycling repeatedly for hundreds of lifetimes. Finally, you're ending your suffering, okay? So coming back to what happens after death is a lot of people, now keep in mind, I had to back up, a lot of people literally do spend time on the astral planes and stay on the astral planes. Like, for example, there's aspects, like I did major clearing different places, and I actually have aspects of me still in these locations, continuing to assist, continuing to unravel, continuing to clear, okay? So again, you all are the same. Everyone has multiple facets of the self. And then also too, think about the soul, your soul, you know, you have soul essence and soul pieces and energy frequencies of you that are scattered all over the universes, galaxies, time, space, dimensions, realities, realms, all existence. Okay. So when the body dies, you're not gathering all your energy, all your essence. It's that part of you, that consciousness that you have, the awareness that you have is what you are still aware of. That's the awareness that you're having is the awareness. Like right now, if you just look at yourself or feel your own self, feel into your own body, feeling into your awareness. And if you just kind of feel in, not to your mind thoughts, but if you just feel and look through your eyes and have the awareness, oh, I'm aware. I'm aware of my voice. I'm aware. Ooh, I'm aware of hearing sounds. I'm aware of looking at this video. I'm aware. Okay. That's the part that keeps on going. That's what's still alive. But that awareness has been attached to a human body that has all these traumas and pain and suffering. So that still identifies until we move on. But we still carry over all that energy because it's an emotional energy. And that's what happens. It's the emotion that we hold on to that we carry forth into our incarnations. The healing is really about clearing and healing the emotion. That's why if anybody's ever watched me and see what I'm doing, every time I'm doing a clearing, I'm always talking about what's the emotion? How does this make you feel? There's a reason for this because I discovered through tracking thousands of people 
repeatedly looking, 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 seeing the same old, same old, same old, it happens because of an emotion. You didn't process the emotion. You didn't know the emotion. So you anchored it into your soul imprint and then you recycle it over and over and over. So coming back to when you die, so you go make agreements, okay? You make agreements and then also you spend time reconnecting, connecting with your soul family, okay? And, and again, sometimes aspects of you don't ever incarnate that are a part of your soul energy, but you're spending time doing different things. So you're doing stuff on the astral planes. You're doing stuff in other time, space dimensions. Again, you're a multi-level being, okay? You're not just this one soul. You're multi, multi, multi. So if you look at your higher levels, there's many, many aspects of your higher levels. This is still you. It's all you. So in the death experience, okay, sometimes you'll hang around, connecting, watching, observing, witnessing. And then other times too, you'll spend time with loved ones or, or peoples or soul families that you want to reconnect with, you know, and this is where sometimes you'll decide, well, I'm going to do this next lifetime with this particular soul family person. Okay. So you, you connect and make agreements and contracts, and then you come into the world again. But there's always also when you do, when it's time to go into the light, like when, when you go into the light itself, okay, this, this is kind of trippy, but it's like you take when you the soul goes into the light, and again, other beings will present like Jesus or whatever your belief systems are, okay? And even sometimes when you don't have belief systems, beings will present. But basically, when you do go into the light, it really is an incredible frequency because creator consciousness, God, what we call God, the all that is, it is pure awareness, okay? But in pure awareness, there's no angst, there's no wounding, there's no shattered, there's no broken, there's no victim, there's no poor me. It's a frequency of a vibrational energy that is what we would call unconditional love, okay? And when the light frequency, when you start to sense that light, it has a high, high vibrational energy and you can be blinded by that light. But also what happens is you're having these massive experiences, like almost like heart opening experiences because of the frequency of that energy. Here's the thing. That light is the same light that's inside of you right now. Okay. That light is masked over. It is dimmed. Okay. It's not shining bright. If it was, you'd probably be in some kind of nirvana state or some kind of samadhi state where you're totally blown open. Okay. But in the, in the death experience, going into that light, you're going in and then you're entering into that frequency and you're merging into the frequency of God, creator consciousness. It's like you're going back into pure awareness where everything comes from, where everything arises from, which is creation. So you go back into that, you merge into that temporarily. So once you go in there, there's no me or you or him or her. It's just pure awareness. So if you were to take your awareness right now, just have a little sense of what that is. If you take your awareness, just close your eyes for a moment, take your awareness, and then just come back down into your heart chakra, right to the heart. Okay. If you fall deep into that heart chakra, look for your own light. Everyone has a light. Even demons have light. All sentient beings have the light because everything is creator consciousness. Everything is God. So come into your light. Look for that light. I don't care if it's a little pin, you know, a little like a, like a piece of sand or big energy. It doesn't matter. You can go into it and you're still going to be blinded by your own light. So taking your awareness, go into that light. Look for it. Find it. You'll find it. It's there. Okay, now you enter into that, go into that light, okay? Now, in that light, there's nothing, okay? All that is is just pure unconditional love. There's nothing else there. There's no angst, there's no shattered, broken, no victim, no poor me, no judgments, no hatred, no blaming, none of it. It's pure awareness. So just hang there for a moment so you can get a sense of, oh, this is what it's like to be in one with creator consciousness. It's the no thing. There's nothing there. Okay. But that feeling, that frequency of just unconditional love.
That's it. So just coming into that light for a moment. And it becomes, it's just like a stillness. Just a pure stillness. There's nothing there. Nothing. Okay. There's no angst. You're not troubled. You're not bothered. Okay. Practice play with that because this is also what happens when you go into the all that is after you've left the body. Okay. When you're in that light. All right. And then when it's time, your consciousness, your awareness will pull and separate from that, the, the big old mix of the all that is. And then that's when you're, you know, you've already agreed to come into certain body, have certain parents, you've made all these agreements in between, and now you're doing that. Okay. So then you come in and you incarnate. And again, you forget, you forget all the things you said you're going to learn and remember and play out this lifetime. We all forget. Okay. So you come in and forget, and then you start all over again. But let's go back to the aspects of you, because sometimes it's hard for people to understand, well, what do you mean? How can I be you know, here and there and all these different places? It doesn't make sense, because you're identified with the physical form that you are. You're not identifying yourself with the expanded awareness and all the different levels of who you are, all the different aspects of who you are. Okay? So... In that in-between time, you can go into the light. You can also come out of that light because you're choosing to and not go into an incarnate, incarnating experience, but you can still come out and still be doing things on the astral planes. People spend time on the astral planes. There's a lot to experience. And think about this. We know our universe, okay? We have our universe. Remember, we got the Milky Way. This is one universe, and it's vast. You can't even, your brain cannot comprehend it. Okay. But check this out. There's universe beyond universe, beyond universe, beyond universe. Okay. You could be anywhere in the universes, anywhere, experiencing, playing, whatever. Okay. So, you know, this may going on for trillions of years. I know the earth, earth itself is, I don't know how old it is, trillions of years, but the separation, the waking up, the creator God consciousness has been eternal. And then everything came from that. We're just fingers or little, we're just little energy frequencies, all part of the whole, part of that whole consciousness. So when we go back into that, we become one with everything, no angst. It feels like we're at peace, resting, safe, no thought, no feeling. We're just in a state of love, unconditional love and pure awareness. And there's nothing there. There's no desires, no needs, no wants, nothing, nothing. And then as soon as we start to have agitation, <laughs> which is movement into physicality, ah, then all that emotional frequencies are still there, still in the energy frequency of the soul imprint. It's imprinted in you. But the cool thing is we're playing, we're doing things, traversing into other time, space, dimensions, universes, galaxies, realities, realms, all existence. And we're just checking out all kinds of different things. Like, for example, there's other places where different kinds of beings are, different kinds of creatures, different kinds of life forms. Okay. So sometimes we'll just, you know, we want to check it out. Maybe we're going to hang out in one of these places for a while. Okay. So maybe a part of us is hanging out over in this dimension while another part of us is incarnating in planet Earth dimension, okay? It's like, again, multidimensional, many, many faceted, you know, facets, many, many facets of who we are. So the, the, de the death thing, you know, it's like, again, if you start looking at and reading people's experiences, there are so many, many different kinds of experiences. And it's because it's not a true death. A true death would be, the actual cord is just is separated, snapping, no more connection. That's true death. Okay, then come back and talk about. Okay, come back into the body and talk about it. Okay, or to or go into somebody else's body and be yeah be. What you, I was just thinking yeah people channel yeah you can come in and come in through and say hey this is what happened all right that'd be more a true story than people who. Um, I claim to have near-death experiences. Well, they are, they are near-death because you almost died. You almost died. Sorry, my error. You almost died. And you're sharing your experiences of almost dying. Okay. But what we're talking about here is when you really do die. Okay. When that cord snaps, you're no longer connected to that body. 
you're not coming back into that body. Now, you could come back through somebody else's body and talk to them, give them information or not, or, you know, go on about your life and next business. And there's a reuniting that happens, which is really cool. I can, I remember when my brother passed and I told him, I said, okay, Nathan, just, you know, make sure you, you know, talk to me, make sure you stay connected. Okay. And he agreed, but here's what's up. You can't, you don't know what's going to happen. Okay. So I've only seen him a few times and it's only when I was crying about him, like feeling bad when he would present and let me know he's okay. But other than that, I didn't see him. So, and the same happened with my mom. Every once in a while, she would present. But they're doing things. They're busy. They're they're reconnecting. They're making plans. They're hanging with other souls that they're reuniting with and that type of thing. So, it's kind of a cool thing. And what's really cool is we, we, we really do can understand and know that there really is no death of who we are. Yeah, death of the body. The body's going to go for sure. But who you are, you know, your energy, your consciousness is eternal. In fact, come back to that light that we were just coming into, your own light. That is your you, the eternal you. Okay? Nothing's going to kill that part of you. Nothing's going to destroy you. Nothing's going to hurt you, shame you, embarrass you. There's nothing there. You're just pure awareness, pure consciousness, and you are eternal. Okay, so struggling in this lifetime, struggling in this body, hating your life. Well, do your work, face yourself, and you'll change your, your, what you're going to be coming into next time. You know, if you heal the wounding in this lifetime, you're going to change what's going to happen in your, in your future incarnations. So all the more reason to face what's inside. Unfortunately, all that carryover, it's just like it, it doesn't just go away. Okay, keep in mind, you are eternal eternal. Oh, I want to say something else. Okay. Everything we say, think and do echoes for eternity. Okay. I've seen this. I've seen it many times. I've shown it. I've seen it. I've, you know, found it myself and then reinforced by showing me different things when I was getting downloads. And it's like, be aware of who, what you, because that's, you know, being someone who's like vicious or angry or hurtful or destroying or greedy or, you know, victim, all that energy is not who you are. Okay. Who you are is a frequency of pure love and light. That is who you are. Right. So when you are aware that your words have energy and they echo, they echo, they echo, 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 echo for eternity. To keep on echoing, okay? So be aware of that, okay? Be aware of who you are. Be aware that you're a multidimensional being. Be aware that you're a very potent, powerful being. Be aware that you are creator incarnate, creating your reality all the time, 100%, okay? You just don't realize it, but it's actually coming from your subconscious. So all your carryover, all your misperceptions, all your wounding, reinforced, more evidence, collecting more proof and evidence, why, you're so, why life is sucks, you know, you're just gathering more proof and evidence of what you've already got holding inside, okay? But now it's time to unravel, unwind, and not to be afraid that when you leave the body, the, you know, the dance is done. No, it's not done. You've been dancing a long time, and you're going to be dancing for eternity, back and forth with lots of different soul people. To be afraid of death is like, yeah, well, go through that too, fearing death, okay? So keep in mind, you are eternal, that you, what you speak, your words have power, you have power, you have light within, you are unconditional love in the very core of your being, as is everyone. The only thing in the way is all your wounding, misperceptions, beliefs, conclusions, all the, that kind of energy that blocks the, shadows the light within. But basically, you want to do what you can. You want to give it your best. You want to show up. You want to open your heart and share the gift of you. That's being liberated when you're no longer afraid to just share who you are. When you're sharing that gift, you're in that state of unconditional love, which is what we're moving towards in this new paradigm period that we're going through globally. And again, you are a very special being, just as everyone is. You're unique. There's no one like you. Never has been, never will be, ever. Okay? You're eternal. So <laughs> if you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kill myself and be done here. No, it doesn't work that way. You're eternal. 
you can't kill yourself. You can kill the body, but you're not going to kill who you are. Okay. Remember that you're eternal. You're going to keep on going on and on. So you might as well make the best of your life and do everything you can to be free to share the gift of you. Once you start waking up and share that gift, you help others. Remember, you, as you shine your light, it hits the light inside others, and then they start to wake up. That's how it works. So remember, you know, yeah, everyone's going to die. Everyone's going to drop the body. We carry all our stuff with <laughs> It's not like you, you know, you're not getting no fresh start where everything gets erased. That doesn't happen, okay? So keep that in mind. The clearer you are, the more evolved you are, the more light you bring, the more joy and happiness you will have. Okay. So remember you do, everyone's going to leave the body, leave it behind. And again, it's important to remember you really are eternal. And, you know, you got massive amounts of people in your soul family that, you know, very deeply are deeply connected with. And there's so much love between you and all these souls, all of them which reminds me about something. Sometimes the peoples that we have the biggest horror, horrible experiences with are often the times that are so, are our soul family that there's the deepest bond because the love is so profound that they're, they're willing to hold that energy, hold the negativity, be the bad person for your soul's evolution, for your soul to wake up and evolve. So that's another piece that happens. That's part of the soul agreements. You know, we're looking back and forth who am I going to play this out with? Who best can I do this dance with? You know, so keep in mind, you know, you're, you're not going to die. The body dies, but you do not die. You are eternal. You will come back. You will go visit your family, your loved ones. You'll visit lots of different people because that's what we all do. You will go into the light. You will incarnate again, unless you don't. <laughs> what I, sorry. What I mean by that is sometimes people choose not to for a while or they try to hold it back. But ultimately, you know, you're going to be coming back because that's part of the soul's growth, the soul's evolution is by being in physical form and dancing with other soul families and unraveling and clearing, getting freer and freer and more liberated, sharing the gift of who you are. That's ultimately what we're really doing here. So death, it's all going to happen. The body will die. It'll come to an end. But it's kind of cool when you really feel into that eternal place. I actually like doing it. I like kind of hanging out in there. Oh, yeah, this is the eternal. This is forever. And it's, it's more of just, a, just being in that energy frequency and, and just basking in it. So you might want to play with that because that's who you are. That's what you experience is your own divinity, your own light, your own unconditional love. So play with it. Hang out in your own heart. Hang out in your own light. Get a sense of your eternalness and then it won't be so scary to think about oh when i leave this body mm, new adventures new possibilities all kinds of cool things can be happening for you so fearing death it's a waste of your energy waste of time but if you fear it then you know face it face what you're really afraid of it's really the ego that's thinking it's going to die that that light that you are really does know you are eternal so that's that in a nutshell what happens when we die. <laughs>